Good morning, everyone. We begin our celebration of Holy Week in a very different way. Forty days ago, we gathered in our churches to begin the season of Lent with the celebration of Ash Wednesday, never thinking of how the, this pandemic of the coronavirus would affect us, not only in society, not only around the world, but even as a church. And so we gather today as we begin Holy Week with Palm Sunday, and I've asked some of members of our pastoral team to join me so that together we're praying with you at home during this solemn Holy Week. Father Garibaldi sends his prayers. He was supposed to be with us during this Holy Week, but because of advice from his medical doctors and given his age, he was asked to remain at home. So Father Garibaldi, know that we are praying with you and that all the people of God are joining also with you, as in your home, you're joining us in prayer. Today we offer our Mass for Tina and Alex Borch, Captain Salvatore and Josephine Santuccio, Captain Stephen and Catherine Dimitri, Tuk Madruga, Mark Gossam, Paul Makowski, Jose Nunez Silva, and Matteo and Vincenza Unsamano. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us gather and sing our opening hymn, All Glory, Love, and Honor. resurrection. 
resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear, that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out 
climbed to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night, all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples had spoken likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for an hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My Father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then, stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber, with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, 
as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I have restored the temple of God, and within three days he will live. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, Jesus is the Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some, some slapped him, saying, Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was Jesus Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Pilate said to 
Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, This is Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, They spat upon him, and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, Jesus Christ. 
cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with with him who were keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked, asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn out of rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Guard is yours. Go. Secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Yes, it doesn't feel the same. Believe me, looking out into an empty church. 
church, not seeing your faces, not seeing us being together has been one of the most difficult things for me as a priest. But we're together and we're celebrating in our homes with those that we are self-isolating with. Maybe many of you have been FaceTiming and calling one another, praying together, but we are together because God's family goes beyond a physical building, no matter how beautiful, no matter how holy, no matter that's the place that we have been together for all of our sacraments, all of the celebrations of life, but God's family goes beyond a particular physical structure. Because Jesus brings us together in our homes, in our workplaces, on our playgrounds, and all the places that we live out our lives as human beings. Jesus brings us together as God's family. And so yes, Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and Easter Sunday will be celebrated differently than we have ever knew or imagined. But we are celebrating it together in our homes with those who may be closest to us. As Cardinal Sean said to me this week when he called me to check up on me, he said, Jim, let us not ever be despairing. But let us always hold on to a hope, the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. So my brothers and sisters, let us take the words of Cardinal Sean, let us take the words of Jesus himself, do not be afraid, put your trust in me. Let those be the words that we pray with this week. And as I've been reminding family and friends and all of you, my brothers and sisters, who live and work and worship, in this Catholic community of Gloucester and Rockport. Yes, trust in God. Please believe in the science that about the coronavirus. But always remember that we are together, ever together in prayer. And so may God bless us as we walk this holy week together. And so let us stand as we together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord in Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, at this most difficult and dangerous time for your children throughout the world, as our loving Father, we ask you to hear our prayers. As we reflect on the sacrifice which Jesus suffered on behalf of humanity during Holy Week, we pray that our society display that same love as we struggle to overcome the coronavirus. We pray at this time we dedicate ourselves by word and action to a renewal of our commitment to our Christian faith and love of neighbor. We pray
pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all those people throughout the world who are suffering from the coronavirus, and particularly for those in intensive care. We pray also for the sick and elderly who at this time are housebound, isolated and unable to see or be with their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. We pray for health workers throughout the world, and particularly in our own nation, who at great personal risk and sacrifice are attending to the needs of victims of this devastating global pandemic. We pray that the Lord bless them with safety in their work and reward their personal sacrifices with success in their labors. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all the faithful departed, our family members, friends, benefactors, and especially Tina and Alex Borgia, Captain Salvatore Josephine Santuccio, Captain Stephen and Catherine Dimitri, Tut Madruga, Mark Bussman, Paul Makowski, Jose Luce Silva, Matteo and Vincenza Cusimano. May they enter into their eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the Catholic community of Gloucester and Rockport, that the Holy Spirit unite us as a community in prayer, fellowship, and service. We pray to the Lord. Lord Merciful Father, by the holy cross of Christ, your Son, has redeemed the world. Help us to take up his cross and to be united to him who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.
fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.